please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Yom Turks in Israel. Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Young Turks. We come to you from a country that's straddling the west and the east and pivoting its way into the future. I'm talking about the startup nation Israel. First up, let's take a look at what we have planned on the show today. start by looking at startups in the water tech space. Now Israelis define water tech as startups that are dealing with the problems of desalination, water security and even irrigation. And in 2017 alone, these startups raised up to $73 million here in Israel alone. So what makes Israel a hub for water tech? Well, it's geography and geopolitics. Situated in a desert by the sea with no access to fresh water supply, Israel's founding fathers pioneered not only desalination technology, but also technology to reuse wastewater. For instance, Israel treats approximately 80% of its wastewater for reuse in agriculture. Israel is also a world leader in its crop yield to water ratio, because startups here are able to leverage the ecosystem's expertise in biotech, sensors, data analytics and IoT to efficiently use water. According to the Startup Nation Central's database, the most innovative water tech companies function in the subsectors of water and wastewater treatment, irrigation, water systems, and water network management. Now, water is also a space of cooperation between India and Israel in the Innovation Bridge. The bridge program has been initiated by the offices of the Prime Ministers of the two countries, together with the Israel Innovation Authority and Invest India. The goal of the program is to bring Israeli companies and startups to a commercial pilot stage with various Indian corporates, funds and government entities. So let's take a look at three startups that have made it to the Innovation Bridge and are already doing interesting work in India. First up, let's look at Lishtot, a startup that's working in the space of water quality detection. You're out trekking, your water bottle is empty and you chance upon a stream and you think drink or not to drink. An Israeli startup, Lishtot, has the answer. Nathaniel Reich is a four-time startup founder. He has four patents to his name and for the last four years, he's been building his latest startup, Lishtot. So today about two million people die every year just for drinking unsafe water. If you all think about it, water is the most essential thing that we drink, that we consume, we pay for it, we don't pay it for air, but we don't know anything about the water that we consume. Considering the 30%, based on the Indian statistic, 30% of the bottles, the, the bottled water in India is fake, you need to know what you are paying for. Like, so what we want is to give people a tool to decide to drink or not to drink. That's why the company name is Lishtot. Lishtot means in Hebrew to drink. What my partner found, Dr. Alan Bauer, he found that water actually has interaction with materials that generate electric field. Water with arsenic, it will have a different electric field. Water with biological residue like E. coli or salmonella will have a different electric field. What we do with this device, we actually program it with an algorithm to detect good water. If it detects good water, like drinkable water, it will show you blue. Otherwise, it will show you red. So I decided to test the test drop. Bottled water, good to drink. Pour some into a glass and take a sip. Then on testing the water in the glass, the test drop indicates red. That's because the water now has traces of my saliva, making it unfit for others to consume. We are the first to detect water contamination without transmitting anything. We're just collecting data. And because we're just collecting data, we can make something very affordable. We don't need any transmitter or to shoot any beam or anything on the water. We don't need it. We have like two types of competitors. First are water labs. We are not really trying to compete with them because they charge you a lot per test, but they give you like higher uh, resolution. Think about other water uh, testing kits 
usually it contains like kind of chemicals and other things that you need to mix. You need to be like a scientist. We want to give tool to any simple person just to test to test their water. The test drop transmits data to the Lishtot app where one can set their geography and the sensitivity that they want on the test drop. Over time, the team believes that their water safety map and database will become the go-to solution for citizens and travelers to detect abnormalities and find clean water and for government bodies and companies to watch out for negative trends and fix them. Presently, all of the manufacturing takes place in Israel and they have a capacity to produce up to 100,000 units per month. Lishtot is one of the startups recognized under the Israel-India Innovation Bridge and Nathaniel and his team have already started working in India, which they see as their biggest market. Today, for example, you have in, probably in your house water filtration system. You don't know if it's effective or not. You don't know if you actually need to replace your filter or not. You want a tool to tell you, hey, the filter is contaminated, I need to replace the filter. But priced at $50 a piece, it's not really affordable for India. So what's the business model that Nathaniel has come up with? What we want to do, we want to give, put more advanced device in people's hands. These people will be water testers. They will be able to supply water testing for a very affordable price, like for example, 50 rupees or so. And in this situation, we will be able to test more water for more people, collect high quality uh, of data, like high data quality. And we will give also a tool for people to generate uh, incomes. Presently, Lishtot's core technology can detect over 20 different contaminants at WHO standards, and the team is also building tools that citizens can use to directly report problems to their water utility companies. From water quality detection, let's move across to a startup that's solving the problem of hygiene and sanitation while saving 95% water compared to incumbent hand washing solutions. We caught up with innovator and entrepreneur Max Simonowski to understand why soapy is the need of the hour in developing countries like India. It is estimated that over 2.4 billion people globally do not have access to facilities to wash hands. According to the WHO, the simple act of hand washing with soap can reduce up to 50% the occurrence of infectious diseases like pneumonia and diarrhea both of which are the two major reasons for death among children under five. One of the best ways to explain it, if we are taking infants, kids, until the age of one, they are not drinking water. However, they are the first population that are dying from the same diseases as waterborne diseases. And all of those coming from hygiene, not from drinking water. According to a WHO and UNICEF report, more than one in three health facilities in low- and middle-income countries do not have any access to water. When the reliability, safety and distance of water supply is taken into account, that ratio increases to one in two. So lack of water is clearly a challenge, the others being access to soap and functioning toilets. And it's this problem of access to water and soap that Max Simonowski wanted to solve. A scientist with a degree in medical sciences and one who has spent years in the development and sales of scientific equipment decided to experiment with existing technology that converts humidity in the air to water to create an all-in-one hygiene microstation. This microstation is not dependent on groundwater or municipal water supply. The solution Max and his team have built is called SOPI. 99.9% .9 of companies around the globe that are trying to do the same, they are generating water only for drinking, while they are forgetting about people that need to wash themselves. Because you can drink, you need two liters a day, but you still need to wash yourself, wash your face, wash your hands, wash your vegetables, breath your teeth, brush your teeth, and take a shower in order to continue to be healthy. The Soapy Hygiene Station is a modular device that converts humidity in the air to water using solar energy. Therefore, it's not dependent on the grid. Each device is triggered by a sensor to dispense the adequate amount of water and a proprietary soap formulation to ensure a full wash as prescribed by the World Health Organization. 
In India, the first SOPI, IoT or Internet of Things enabled station has been set up at a school in Bhage Palli in Karnataka in partnership with non-profit Swasti Health Catalyst. Each system is triggered without any buttons or pedals or valves. There is a smart bracelet that each user has. On this bracelet, we have a unique ID semi-linked to, to, to the ID of the user. So we have gender and we have age. So we can monitor who used the unit when and how it then affects their life. We can generate insights on boys and girls. We can generate insights between and the links between hand hygiene to health and hygiene to attendance to school and then to education. And from that, we also can learn a third level of insights and predictions of how the community can really look in the future. Each device can create up to 100 liters of water a day and provides more than 600 washing cycles, while conventional hand washing systems provide up to 50 or 200 cycles. The team at SOPI claims that this leads to 95% savings in water consumption an important metric to consider in dry and arid regions that have limited natural water supply. SOPI is also working with partners like Swasti to move beyond schools and also set up these stations in healthcare centers and at a village community level too. The, the cheapest unit is $500. Uh, the most expensive right now is $2,000. The price for the user is 125 to 130 rupees for a year. So imagine yourself, if you delete it to 220 or 365 days, that means that you're paying less than half a rupee for each day. Each station has a life of five to six years, and all the R&D and manufacturing presently takes place in Israel itself. But over time, Max is open to moving some part of the manufacturing and assembly to India to ensure lower costs for its distribution and channel partners. We are a for-profit organization and the reason for that is that we want to expand and not rely on outsource of fundings or of help. We want to rely on those who can be our customers. We are now developing a unit that is going to be placed within food service environment. We'll reduce the price of water because we're saving 95% of water by our unit and will increase a lot the hand hygiene practice. In fact, SOPI is one of the Israeli companies that's been recognized under the India-Israel Innovation Bridge and is working with teams at the Global Pairs Challenge, iCreate in Ahmedabad and LiftPure to expand its network in India. In the next year, we can expect SOPI installations across Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Delhi. On that note, it's time for a short break, but keep watching Young Turks because when we return, we're going to put the focus on Aqualens, a startup that's using ozone tech to supply clean water to your entire home. Young Turks in Israel. Welcome back to the special edition of Young Turks that comes to you from Startup Nation in Israel. Now, over the last couple of years, innovators and entrepreneurs in Israel have definitely been looking east, but it's not just to explore the market potential of places like China and India, but it's also actually just to reimagine innovation and make it appropriate for markets like India and the developing world that need creative solutions, especially in the area of water tech. Israel's exports of its water technology stands at $2 billion annually, and an industry body that Startup Nation Central quotes in its study on Israel's water tech sector finds that there is a very high return on investment in sanitation and drinking water supply. Every dollar invested results in a 3 to $4 in economic development because the magnitude of the problem at hand is massive. Worldwide, 2.1 billion people still live without drinking water in their homes. In India, a report by the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation finds that 66 million people in 20 states are at risk due to excess fluoride and 10 million due to excess arsenic in groundwater. Now, while we may filter our drinking water, a lot of life-threatening diseases may inflict us from other sources. This truth hit close to home for one Israeli entrepreneur, Yuval Rodan, on a visit to India. One day, I was at India and one of my colleagues has almost passed away from waterborne disease. And I asked her what's happened. She said, I don't know, I never drink water because we are not allowed to drink water as foreigners. But 
I got contaminated water in the showers. And then I've decided the idea of coming of complete house water purification system that will be installed at the roof tank outlet and supply safe water all over the house. So Yuval, who was then working with a large water management company in the Asia-Pacific region, decided to quit and start Aqualens. He put together a team of young engineers to invent a plug-and-play solution that hooks up to the municipal water supply to a household and disinfects it using ozone technology. Now what's unique about this, you ask? Ozone tech has been around for a while. Well, in Aqualens's Nano Blue solution, the innovation lies in the way ozone is generated, leading to a more effective cleansing, longer shelf life of the purification unit, and significantly lower costs. Our dramatic engineering breakthrough is actually that we are having the capability of producing high ozone concentration in a very, very, very low power consumption. And when we say low power consumption, it's few, few milliwatts. It's like a small battery. Actually, we almost have bended the physics rules. The other breakthrough is in the use of solar energy to power the process of ozone creation within the unit. This has two implications. One, the internal parts of the unit, like electrodes, don't corrode as easily, leading to a longer shelf life of the Nano Blue compared to other devices that also use ozone tech to clean water. The second implication of being solar powered is that this makes Nano Blue an off grid solution, leading not only to power savings when deployed in large urban housing colonies, but also an ideal cleaning solution for India's smaller towns and villages that are often hit by erratic power supply. The process that we are taking the, air, the oxygen from the air, we are uh, flow, uh, taking this air and flows through a special uh, structure of electrodes. These electrodes converting the oxygen to ozone. Ozone is O3. Then we are injecting the ozone to the water. The water and the ozone have sufficient contact time. And then we are achieving a complete disinfection from bacteria, viruses, and cysts. So we can destroy E. coli and cholera and cryptosporidium and giardia and polio. And the beauty of the ozone is that it's doing its job and disappears. It's, as opposed to chlorine that stays in the water for months and days, you can smell it, you can taste it. Ozone is disappearing after 15 minutes. Besides this, NanoBlue's patented technology also cleans the water from arsenic, lead, mercury and iron. Having already run pilots in Bangalore and Gurgaon, the team is now in the process of inking deals with local distributors and even speaking with large real estate developers to deploy their civil solution that can purify up to 50,000 litres of water per day. Meanwhile, the team continues to innovate and has created portable solutions for use by Defence Forces and by agencies in natural disaster management. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Young Turks from Israel. This has, of course, been a destination for us over the last few years, and we are going to keep continuing our coverage. In fact, a delegation of Israeli startups are going to be coming to India later this year, and you can watch CNBC TV 18 to find out the ones that are going to get funded via the Innovation Fund and also what's happening with the India-Israel Innovation Bridge. With that, it's a wrap. You can write to us on Facebook and Twitter. You can also email us at youngturks at NW18 and tell us what you thought of the program. From the team here, thank you very much for watching. On our next episode of YT in Israel, we'll put the focus on affordable healthcare, medical devices and smart mobility. Young Turks in Israel.